Imagine a world where patients and their families can directly fund scientists developing the next breakthrough drug or treatment that they need. A world in which drug development is a collaborative, open and decentralized process. Such a future is not only possible, but the decentralized science community is making it a reality through blockchain, crypto, and NFTs, of course. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about on this CoinMarketCap episode. My name is Kay, and here on CoinMarketCap, we are on a mission to make crypto accessible all around the world. That's why we love making videos for you that are packed with information, that are easy to understand, and simple to share with your friends and family members, especially if they're interested in science and crypto. So if you want something more than just hype, and to actually learn about crypto, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now, turn on those notifications to not miss on our next video and let's learn together. Decentralized science or DSI. Blockchain is shaking up the banking, supply chain and healthcare industries and scientific research looks to be the next industry ready to be revolutionized by blockchain. The scientific research space has long been controlled by a handful of powerful publishing companies that decide which research projects are worth publishing and therefore which projects are worth to fund. And while the open access movement has made progress towards a fairer system, research scientists are still spending half of their careers writing grants and funding proposals and struggling to get funding for most of their research. Well, that was until early last year when scientists around the world began collaborating on how to use blockchain to better fund their research and share their results. And so began the DSI movement. The DSI movement is in short a group of scientists who are applying decentralized ideas and technology to improve and advance modern science. The movement is very new and so it lacks a formal manifesto or plan describing what it exactly it wants to achieve. However, the DSI platforms and startups that are up and running today have four common aims. Number one, to free up research data like test results and studies from behind paywalls, to eliminate the reliance on profit-hungry middlemen like publishing giants to make collaboration easier among scientists around the world and number four to drastically alter the way scientific research is funded. DSI platforms hope that through decentralized key processes like funding and sharing the results of important research, it can speed up the rate of discovery in every scientific field. To fully understand what the decentralized science movement wants to do, let's take a deeper look at some of the problems the scientific community faces today. Number one, Finding funding. Scientists want to spend as much of their careers doing what they love to do, science. What they don't want to spend hours of their time doing is pitching grant givers or corporations for funding. And yet, it seems that scientists often spend as much as half of their careers writing grant requests and funding proposals. Now, why is this? Because the only way research scientists stand any chance of winning funding is by carrying out novel or attention-grabbing research, the kind of research journals and newspapers want to include in their cover page. For example, think about miracle cancer drug or exotic herb to cure your acne. Unfortunately, early stage exploratory or non-critical research is now very difficult to find funding for, almost regardless of how important it could be for our future. Over time, this has reduced the total quantity of research scientists have achieved and has greatly contributed to the replication crisis, where nobody can get funding to replicate old results to double check the first funding, which is the basic foundation of good science. In a sense, researchers are only really incentivized to create work that shows large effects because journal prizes new and spectacular results. Because after all, they're in the business of selling subscriptions, which we understand, but it's science. But if nobody replicating the results of a study, are the results truly meaningful? Which leads us to problem number two, the journals themselves. Today, scientists share most of their research and knowledge with the scientific community by publishing articles and journals. Let's say you're a scientist. After thinking up and testing an idea, you put together a study explaining what you found, which you write as an article to submit to a journal. After receiving the study, the journal's editors then send that article to a few other scientists working in the same field, which is commonly referred to as peer review process. The reviewing scientists then provide feedback on the submitted article and tell the journal's editors whether they think the study is good enough to be published in the journal. 
The feedback is then passed on to you and resubmit to the journal if you wish. Today, there are tens of thousands of different scientific journals and each one usually focus on a specific area of study like neuroscience or medicine. Publishing in a journal can take a year or more from submission to actual publication and it's a very competitive process. Journals often choose to publish the sexiest studies, the studies which sell as many extra copies of the journal as possible, which means that scientists have no option but to research whatever they think will get published the most and not what would be best for the scientific field or even the world. Also, journals rarely publish negative results, which often leads to scientists repeating research which has been conducted elsewhere multiple times. On top of it, the pressure journals put on scientists to publish positive headline grabbing research is one problem, but the money these journals charging is possibly an even larger problem. Today, five companies control more than half of all academic publishing and the whole sector makes an estimated 19 billion per year which puts it about halfway between music and film industries. In 2005, Deutsche Bank referred to scientific publishing as a bizarre triple pay system in which the state funds most of the research, pays the salary of those checking the quality of the research and then buys most of the published product themselves. <laughs> Beside money-grabbing journals, scientists are also struggling to share information with one another, which brings us to point number three, information sharing. The vast majority of experiments that come back with a negative result never make it into a journal. Also, vast amounts of scientific knowledge and research is trapped behind paywalls or inside private databases, which means that other scientists in different parts of the world don't know about the test negative outcome. The result of all of this is that researchers spend years or even decades exploring dead ends that scientists elsewhere have already confirmed as fruitless. In fact, in 2013, a study reported that half of all clinical trials in the US are never published in a journal, meaning billions of dollars are wasted every year on repeating tests that have been carried out elsewhere, but never entered the public sphere. So besides wasting money, keeping scientific research under lock and key goes against the whole ethos of science. Science advances forward when researchers test each other's idea by pulling them apart, but grinds to a halt when researchers either can't or don't share the results of their research with anyone, which is the current state of the science community. Of course, a couple of movements have sought out to solve these problems before. For example, the open access movement, which is basically set up guiding principle through which scientific research is distributed online for free and it's probably the most successful attempt so far making scientific research more transparent and open. On top of it, a number of journals have adopted this model by changing their funding model to charge researchers to publish their work instead of charging their reader for a subscription fee. Unfortunately, the researchers are having to pay a lot of money to publish their work because the publishers don't want to lose out on money that readers would have paid to read the article. Nature, for example, is charging $11,390 to publish an open access article right now not very open access. So while open access has worked in that individuals can access more research for less money, it hasn't solved the problem yet. However, the DSI movement believes that blockchain can make scientific knowledge more accessible than open access ever could. So now let's take a look at some of the most promising DSI movements today. Molecule is a decentralized funding ecosystem for early stage research and discoveries. Basically in layman terms is a marketplace for biotech intellectual property and patents. On the platform, researchers can then make their data and patents visible to a global audience, receive feedback on their data and explain the commercial viability of their projects with potential funders. They can also present their research projects to investors and investors can privately fund the next therapeutic breakthrough in whichever area they're interested in most. And because the data stored via Molecule is housed on a blockchain, it's immutable. So disputes about who owns which patent or which scientist invented the miracle cure become much easier to resolve. Molecule's platform is built around intellectual property non-fungible tokens or IP NFTs. These NFTs essentially function as a proof of ownership over a specific IP or patent stored 
stored on a blockchain. The IP NFTs enable any researcher to share ownership of the data, their IP or their royalty rights with anyone else on Molecule. And by tokenizing early stage IP, Molecule brings liquidity to a formerly illiquid asset class and lowers the risk for investors by fractionalizing said IP. Molecule has strong ties with VitaDAO, which is the next DeSci platforms we're going to talk about. And together, the two platforms created the first ever IP to NFT transfer, which is being used to fund novelty longevity therapeutics at the University of Copenhagen. VitaDAO is a drug development DAO wanting to acquire, support and finance new therapists and research in the biopharma space. The DAO hopes that its work will address the patenting and intellectual property problems plaguing the biopharma sector right now. Namely, that intellectual property and patents are the core drivers for funding and innovation in the industry. But most patents are in the hands of a few highly centralized entities. The VitaDAO Collective will directly hold legal IP rights to each project and aims to build a portfolio of assets represented as IP NFTs and other tokens. This will help to stem the flow of patents going towards the larger biopharma companies by making them open access instead. And by operating as a DAO, Vita gives members the freedom to choose to invest in the research projects that which they believe hold the most value. So if you bought tokens or NFTs from a Vita DAO for a scientific project, you have a stake in the outcome of the research, much like investing in a company. Now, obviously, this gives people with specialist knowledge or a vested interest to invest in projects they're passionate about and could bring a lot of extra cash to research funding. Like every other DAO, Vita has its own governance token called Vita. The decentralized science platform, which takes its name from the DSI movement, functions as a network and marketplace for peer reviews. To make it simpler, it's like eBay for scientists who want to find other scientists to review their work in exchange for cash, kudos, or both. The site wants reviewers and authors to be able to work together independent of scientific journals and other intermediaries. And it wants reviewers to be properly recognized and compensated for their contribution, as they should. So instead of going through scientific journals to have their work peer reviewed, researchers can find peers to review their work through an open and transparent platform. Right now, the the platform is building a public data bank of peer reviewers as well as a network for publishers to interact with scientists willing to carry out reviews. So researchers using the platform can earn verifiable credits for undertaking crucial work which could come in the form of NFTs or crypto. And each scientist can store their NFTs in a public wallet which can double up as their digital resume. Article and study authors will be able to speak to a broad field of peers and have their work reviewed by a well established established and internationally recognized members of their field, giving their work more authority. But this is not just for established scientists. Student scientists can build their digital reputation by taking part in community tasks, allowing them to be rewarded for their contributions to science while they still complete their studies. The platform also benefits from being resistant to political censorship or interference as peer reviews carried out through the platform are public and therefore transparent. So no meddling. So far, the platform has received funding from the European Union Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program and is partially funded through a European Research Council grant. Obsentia is a DAO using Web3 tools like blockchain and crypto to help scientists earn rewards and recognition for sharing their neuroscience data with the world. The DAO, which is mostly made up of Web3 engineers and neuroscientists, focuses on freeing up neuroscience data sets that are siled in centralized databases like university hospitals or private hard drives. While the DAO is starting with neuroscience, there are plans to expand the platform to cater to other scientists as well. Obsentia aims to increase the quantity of scientific data sets available around the world, as well as coordinate collaboration and democratize funding within the scientific research space to create new open data sets. If necessary, the new data sets could be stored anonymously, which would protect identities of those people included in the data, while allowing other scientists to analyze the data using artificial intelligence. So as you can imagine, scientists being able to analyze vast data sets without worrying about data protection or hiding private 
patents data would be a huge win for research scientists all around the world and would lead research progressing much faster than it is today. So by incentivizing scientists to share their data with the world, Obsensia hopes to eventually bring more of the economic value created by the scientific community back to the people who actually created it, while also increasing the rate of scientific progress. Where other DSI platforms focus on the theoretical aspects of science, LabDAO focuses on the execution and experimental aspects. LabDAO is an open community-run network of laboratory services where scientists can either run experiments on behalf of other scientists or pay to have experiments carried out on their behalf. In other words, it's an Airbnb for laboratory services. LabDAO hopes that by connecting wet lab researchers who work with liquids and chemicals and biological materials with dry lab scientists and researchers who work with computations, physics, and engineering, it can increase the rate of progress and discovery in every scientific field. So how does LabDAO work in practice? Let's say that you're a scientist in a biochemistry lab that needs to perform an experiment, but lacks crucial and expensive piece of equipment. For example, you could go and buy the equipment yourself, which would probably start gathering dust the moment that you finish the experiment. Or you could use LabDAO to connect with a group of scientists who, that have the equipment that you need, enabling you to test your theory without buying the expensive piece, which only gets used once or twice. All the data generated from the experiments organized through LabDAO can be managed on chain or using NFT data sets, which can be licensed later or third parties can use it. So you see, NFTs is not just about art. Scientists also benefit because instead of approaching numerous laboratories or one by one and then discussing their needs with loads of different people, they can see all the labs online with transparent pricing and apply to any or all of them with a single request. Going forward, LabDAO hopes to develop its platform farther into a digital ecosystem for scientific research that will streamline the experimenting process and make collaboration easier at a broader scale than ever before. So as you can see, crypto is not just about money. It's not just decentralized money. There's so much more. There's so much more that blockchain technology can do. And as you can see, it can revolutionize entire industries as it's doing right now with decentralized science. So if science and crypto is something that you're passionate about, stop looking for that moon coin and jump into this field right now. Look for DSI projects that are operating right now or maybe start your own and help all of us live a little bit longer, live a little bit healthier. What are you waiting for?